Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this video I'll be going over the Native Instruments Holiday Gift for 2015 which consists of nine new blocks instruments and three new blocks ensembles. For those of you who do not own a reactor, the ensembles can be opened inside the free reactor player, so there's something for everyone here. So the new ensembles are in the Player tab in the Reactor Blocks folder, and they are named Lumico, Submotion, and XY. And we're going to take a look at these in a minute. I just want to go over the new instruments first, and then we're going to take a look at how they are used in our new ensembles. So the instruments can be found in the Library tab, and again, those are going to be in the Blocks folder. And we have a whole new folder in here named West Coast. So let's take a look at that first. West Coast here refers to West Coast synthesis, which stands in contrast to East Coast or subtractive synthesis popularized by companies such as Moog. So in general, you're going to find that the West Coast synthesis stuff is going to be a little bit more experimental than um, maybe you'd be used to with stuff like uh, the Monarch blocks, which are pretty basic, you know, you've just got an oscillator and you can control uh, you know, the very basic oscillator parameters such as pitch. Whereas with your West Coast synthesis oscillators, you're going to see we have a lot more options to work with and we're going to end up with way more complex waveforms. So our first module in the West Coast folder is the LPG, which stands for Low Pass Gate and the low pass gate is a type of low pass filter. It's a little different than the low pass filters that we're used to working with from subtractive synthesis, but it has somewhat similar operation. The level knob is going to control the filter cutoff point. And as we'll see um, when we st start looking at the ensembles, we can also kind of use this as a type of a VCA, a voltage controlled amplifier. However, we don't have access to any resonance control with this filter, which is a little odd. And in its place, we have these two knobs, pluck and damp. And again, I'm going to take a look at how these work once we start looking more closely at the ensembles. But for now, I just want to note that it's just kind of a strange filter. It's not really that similar to anything I've ever seen before in a digital system. We can make it act a little bit more like a regular uh, resonant low pass filter by turning on the low pass mode here. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us a little bit of resonance and it's going to uh, make the cutoff steeper, and make it a little bit more like a standard low pass filter. And finally, we have three modes of operation. We've got vanilla and snappy and smooth, and these are all going to affect the sound in a different way and we'll take a listen to that in a few minutes. Next up we have the CFG, which is four envelope generators in one compact package. We can trigger these using the buttons here, and you see the value rise up and down on the right side of the panel view. So each envelope here has two stages. We can control the shape and the time of each one, and we've got a few different envelope types as well. So the first type is a simple attack decay envelope. Sound is going to rise to the peak and then start decaying immediately. The second type is an attack sustain release envelope. This is going to stay at the peak level until the gate goes back to zero, at which point the release stage will begin. And finally, we have a repeating envelope, which operates somewhat like a unipolar LFO. We've got a few different configuration types here as well. So we have a 2x2 two two configuration, where we can trigger the first gate, and the second gate will trigger when the first envelope ends. We can also have these overlap somewhat. So when the first envelope reaches its peak, the second envelope begins. And we can also make these overlap. So there's a lot of possibilities here. 
and we also have the option to go to a 1x4 configuration and so we can create these envelopes that are triggering each other and cycling constantly. So this is a pretty cool um, little envelope generator and it's definitely a lot different from what you might expect from an envelope generator if you're used to subtractive synthesis. You know, you're just kind of used to the simple attack decay, sustain, release controls. And this just kind of adds a little bit more flavor and a little bit of a more experimental vibe to um, the instrument. We have individual outputs for each envelope. We have gates for when each envelope ends. And then we have a bunch of outputs for mixes of the envelopes. So lots of possibilities here. Next up we have the DWG. I'm assuming the WG stands for Waveform Generator. I'm not sure what the D means. So this is our West Coast Oscillator, and again it looks quite a bit different from what we might be used to. We've got two oscillators wrapped into one, got the modulator and the carrier. They each have their own frequency control. They can be a constant frequency, or they can be controlled by the incoming pitch values. And the modulator can also be a ratio of the carrier frequency. So lots of different ways to set it up. We've got internal FM controls. They each have external FM as well. And on top of all of that, we've got this timbre section on the right side that controls wave shapers and all sorts of stuff to shape the harmonics of our signal. And in the timbre section, all of the controls can be modulated using the modulator. So this is a very deep oscillator, and we can use it to very easily create these complex, harmonically rich sounds that would be very hard to get with the classical waveforms that we typically get out of subtractive synthesis oscillators. All right, next up, let's take a look at the XY sequencer, which is my favorite out of the new blocks in this release. Um, we have two gate inputs, which can advance us along in our sequence of 16 steps. Mm -hmm. These first two patterns require X gates. And this third one um, reacts to both X and Y gates. So we can step through this sequence in a variety of different ways. We also have direction controls to control the direction that we advance in whenever we receive a new gate. So we can go backwards and we can choose values at random. Um, so this is a really, really cool sequencer and it allows you to morph a sequence in a lot of different ways very easily. So in addition to our regular output, we also have gate X, gate Y, out logic, and gate logic outputs here. And those are all referring to the fact that we have these other sequences in our XY sequencer that we can access by pressing the tabs at the top here. So if we advance to a new step that has the X gate turned on, then we'll get an appropriate output from the gate X output of our sequencer. And in addition, we can use the gates to control whether or not our values are getting sent to the out logic output. So by default, these are only getting sent if our X gate is on, but we can change that to be Y gate, to the Y gate or the X gate, to either or, to and, both of them. So there's a bunch of different options here. All right, so that's the West Coast folder, which is definitely the most exciting aspect of this upgrade, in my opinion. Next up, we have in the Rounds folder, the Rounds LFO. Uh, I don't really have much to say about this one. What it adds that our other LFOs could not do is you can sync to host and have the LFO be controlled by the BPM. This is obviously very useful. Other than that, it's a fairly simple basic LFO as far as I can tell. Next up in the bento box section, we have the crossfader. 
This is very simple. It lets us fade between two signals. Sometimes when you're halfway between two signals, you lose a little bit of the power. So um, it also allows you to boost the center a little bit so uh, you don't lose amplitude as you fade from one side to the other. In addition, we can invert the signal and either boost it or attenuate it. So pretty simple but pretty useful little addition to the bento box folder here. We also have a new sequencer, the 4mod sequencer. 4 mods gives us four eight-step sequencers. We can draw in the steps. Each step has a gate button at the bottom that allows us to determine whether or not the step gets sent at all, and a glide button which determines whether or not we're gliding from the previous really received gate. We can set our sequences to be bipolar by pressing the button on the right hand side here. So it's pretty standard but pretty useful uh, step sequencer here. What we can do that makes it more cool is we can change the direction. Uh, we can make it go random, we can make it go backwards, and um, we can also change the direction in real time using modulation which is pretty nifty and can make for some pretty great generative sequences. Alright, so, so far we've gone over seven of the nine new blocks. The last two can be found in the utility folder. They're named macro knobs and macro switches. And these are fairly basic and you can use them for a variety of purposes such as mapping controllers or um, using host automation to control modulation inside blocks or simply condensing multiple uh, modulation signals into a signal a single signal so these are pretty simple but useful additions to the blocks library so here's Lumico. This one can be pretty huge. And if you look at the signal flow, it's fairly simple. We have the waveform generator. We're mixing together its various outputs, sending them to a low-pass gate, and then running that into some reverb. In addition, you can see that we've got the ADSR, but we don't have a voltage-controlled amplifier. Instead, we're using the level control of the low-pass gate as a sort of amplifier. So when the level knob is all the way down, the low-pass gate doesn't let any frequencies pass through. Turning a single knob can have a lot of effects. due to the internal modulation that's going on in the DWG. Next, let's check out a patch that uses the pluck parameter. The pluck knob itself is going to control the amplitude of the pluck. And the damp knob has a pretty easy to predict effect. In addition, you can distinctly hear the difference of the different types of low-pass gate engines that we have here. Next up is the Submotion Ensemble. We've got two oscillators being mixed together with a crossfader sent to a filter amplitude being controlled by an envelope and VCA, and finally we're sending the output to some reverb. So it's a very basic um, subtractive synth setup. And something I wanted to note, however, is if you look in the structure view, you see that we're controlling the gate of the 4 mod using one of the rounds LFOs. And that's the only thing that LFO is connected to. So this LFO is being used to control the speed of our 4 mod sequencer. I just thought that was a pretty cool setup um, to easily control the uh, 
gates of the 4 mod in a way that could be modulated in real time. The 4 mod here is being used to control four different blocks at once, which can give you some pretty cool effects. All right, and last up we have XY. This might be my favorite of the bunch, mostly because it's really weird and kind of hard to tell what's going on a lot of the time. Uh, we have a DWG creating sound for us. It's running through three low pass gates, which are, you know, having their pluck inputs triggered by the XYS that we see. Lots of stuff going on. Alright, so you hear there we can use the XY sequencer to create some very easy to control sounds, but we can also get some stuff that's much more generative sounding and just very interesting in the free running menu. All right, once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. Thank you guys for watching.